Hey everyone, Rob here, and we have updates in Iceland, and this time, not necessarily about the Reykjanes Peninsula, but about another volcano that has now been upgraded in their flight color code to yellow from green because of the, you know, the unrest that they're seeing right there. Now, Grimsvat, which you can see down here on the right-hand side below Vatnajökull, that has now been changed from a green to yellow color code. Uh, there has been a rise in the occurrence of seismic activities in the area surrounding the volcano. Again, located beneath Vatnajoko, there appears to be an unusually high quantity of them within a short period of time. Now, Grinsvat is the longest currently active volcano in the country, and it has been ready for another eruption for several years. Now, talking about color codes for aviation and things like that, we have this amazing chart here, which kind of goes over the different statuses. Now, of course, normal and green, that, that means a non-erupting volcano is exhibiting typical background activity, including, you know, steaming, some seismic activity, thermal stuff, degassing, as long as the activity is within the range of typical non-eruptive, uh, you know, activity it's, that's normally seen for the volcano, it's going to be green. It moves to an advisory of yellow when the volcano is exhibiting signs of elevated unrest above the known norm, basically. Then it moves from here to this orange, which is a watch. You know, well, there's two, two oranges, so there's watch orange. And, and that's when the volcano is exhibiting heightened or escalating unrest with increased potential of eruption. And the time frame uh, of the eruption or the uncertainty that's underway poses a limited hazards including no you know minor volcanic ash emissions or or none of them or just you know very little and that's the watch i'm actually a bit surprised that uh, the rake in his peninsula just because they've been talking about you know the building pressure and the risk of an eruption more and more that the fact that that is not an orange at this point but then we'll go there but then we have a second type of orange and that's a warning and the warning orange, that means a major volcanic eruption is imminent, underway, or suspected, but it poses limited hazards to aviation because of no, uh, none, or minor volcanic ash admissions. Then, of course, we go to the top levels, which is a watch of red. That means a volcanic eruption is underway that poses limited hazards to ground-based communities, but includes significant emission of ash into the atmosphere that could affect aviation. So like an ash plume, uh, but that does not yield significant ash fall onto the ground communities, but it of course goes into the air routes and things like that. And then we have the absolute top level, which is a red warning, and that is a major volcanic eruption is imminent, underway, or suspected, with hazardous activity on both the ground and in the air. So uh, that's something that in case you were wondering what all of these color codes mean, again, we have yellow now in Grimsvat on one side of the country and we have it on the other side of the country. We have another yellow for the Reykjanes Peninsula. So uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. But when we're looking at these color codes, we found this map here of the uh, United States from the USGS and this is their natural hazards volcano hazards map and in here we can actually see when we're talking about volcanoes there's a whole bunch of them you know every one of these sort of triangles is a volcano and we can see that there's some of them here that have different color codes especially along Alaska here we can see yellow and oranges and greens you know kind of a little bit of everything sprinkled along here and then mainland uh, throughout the, the mid-United States is all just green. But you can see just how many volcanoes there are along the West Coast and through Alaska. And then, of course, uh, you know Hawaii and the Pacific Ocean and things like that. There's a lot going on. So just something that I thought I would uh, point out when talking about these color coats. Uh, these things are all around the world. And there's more volcanoes and more shifting of color codes than perhaps we initially had thought. Now, again, when we're talking about back to Grimsvat, you can see here, here's the Vatnajoko Glacier. And, and again, this is situated right here on the east coast of Iceland. But when we're looking at uh, Grimsvat, there's a lot of other volcanoes just around it. You know, Iceland has tons of them. Um, and the last time 
that this color code was downgraded was November 9th in 2022. That's when the Icelandic Meteorological Office lowered the aviation color code for Grimsvot to green, which is again the lowest level on the four color scale. And they noted that there was no short term increases in activity. And then they also noted that the long term trends remained above the normal levels that they had seen. You know, the seismic activity continued and they characterized that as unusual uh, with an increasing number of earthquakes that were also intensifying over the past months. But the, and the level of deformation had already ex exceeded the level measured before the last eruption of Grimsvot in 2011. Now, in the most recent eruption in 2011, it included explosions with multiple 15 to 20 kilometer altitude ash plumes that produced ashfall tens of kilometers away. And this sort of glacier area, and these, these volcanoes located here, they produce typical glacial outburst floods known as Jokulhlaups. And they've been recognized for centuries, apparently, and have occurred regularly since the end of the last ice age when a lake fed by glacial meltwater breaches its dam and, and drains. The last ice age when a lake fed by glacial meltwater breaches its dam, uh, last Jokulhlaup was, of course, they, they occur, this occurs every year, and um, the best known Jokulhapes from Vatniokul occur from three separate places. Grimsvat volcano, of course. And then we also have them coming out of the Skafa, Skafata cauldrons and glacial lake Grainlon. So all of these uh, things. But this the Skafta cauldrons is part of this uh, the river here. You can see this is where all of this, this occurs here. So the water... It basically melts and comes down here along the left, down this down this river. So um, the most dangerous one of these uh, yokelhypes uh, in Iceland have been associated with subglacial volcanic activity due to the greater volume of meltwater produced. And, uh, you know, we're looking at past eruptions in yokelhypes and possible occurrences or sort of connections between the two when looking at Grimsvat now that it's been up upgraded. Um, there's not really a strong correlation between the sort of meltwater and the eruption. It's just kind of like this thing is ready to erupt whenever it is. Um, the relationship between eruptions and floods is, is, I mean, some people say that there's a connection, but it's not well understood. You know, in 1953, Sigurd Thorsson suggested a correlation between them you know, Jokulhapes and Grimsvat eruptions. And he proposed that if a large volume of water was stored in the lake, that the pressure release following the sudden removal of water during a flood could facilitate magma movement and trigger an eruption. And let me just go back to some of these uh, these other maps here. Trigger, trigger an eruption. So this type of scenario was proposed to explain, you know, the various eruptions in Jokulhapes in 1922, 1938, and... You know, Iceland's been preserving records since 1922 and have indicated a few eruptions that were, you know, connected with local hapes and also several eruptions with no connection whatsoever to these sort of glacial floods and a large number of local hapes or floods with no subsequent eruption. So the only recent confirmed event where a local was followed by eruption took place in 2004. So that's just a, a little bit of a background about Grimsvat when we're talking about what's going on over there. Again, it's been upgraded to a yellow color code and it's expected that it's going to erupt. You know, people have been waiting for this for, for years now, on and off. But as we, of course, know, and sort of jumping back to this other one, looking at all of the different volcanoes in Iceland... Um, especially under Vatnajökull, those are the ones that have the highest probability. These ones that are under glaciers, you can see AF Vatnajökull is here down at the bottom uh, with Katla. These are kind of in hiding, and Hekla as well. Uh, but then we have these ones under glaciers. Those are the ones that, when they erupt, they produce a lot more ash going into the air. So we have Askja, we have Grimsvat, Katla, and Hekla all ones that people in Iceland have been saying these are going to erupt soon. 
uh, or they're waiting for the eruption. And then, of course, we have the Reykjanes Peninsula, which uh, yeah, is just going to be ongoing for perhaps hundreds of years. So that's the news for today. Again, wrapping up, Grimsvat changed to a yellow color, color code, stage two of four with an increasing level of concern. So now we have in Iceland two volcanoes that uh, are, yeah, color-coded yellow. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it informative. And of course, I'll keep you up to date on any news that's going on. Thanks so much.